Hey guys, is Captain Ink here to save the day for you? We're going to find out here on the Floaty Channel. This is an adjustable stroke, $250 machine. I got a $30 discount for you. Don't forget to use our code in the description below. I also have some other gifts from their website to show you, but let's try this thing out on some silicone. They've sent some to us. We want to make sure it works for you at home in your studio. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. Let's take a look. Okay, let's open up this box from Captain Ink and take a look at the machine. And there it is, the Captain Ink Machine. So mine's black and it has floaty tattoo engraved on it. They actually come in a lot of amazing colors. Uh, the company did reach out to me and let me know they didn't have those colors and offered me my name engraved on a black one. And I said, yes, who wouldn't say yes to that? So um, just so you know, these are very customizable. What's actually very interesting and cool about the Captain Ink is that it comes in so many different colors and you can uh, choose the color of the battery versus the grip versus the centerpiece all separately. So there's like three different colors. You can get crazy, um, but there are Marvel themes like Captain America, the Hulk, um, you know, color schemes. So very cool. And I thought that was a really neat thing to show to you guys. So Here's some more flashed up on the screen for you. Cha, cha, cha. There, done. So all of those colors, amazing. Moving on. Let's look at this thing. So thank you for the cool little case that comes with it. It actually has a separate compartment here where you can keep your accessories. I have a, actually that is an RCA connection there and we have a USB. So let's see what we got here. An RCA conversion. I love that. So we can convert the battery to RCA. Um, if you work with a very strong power supply like a Musotoku like I do, you might appreciate that. So moving on, we're going to see how this thing works with the battery today. There's the battery. Look at that thing. That's pretty cool. I'm going to move this so you guys can see better. All right. So there are our adjustable strokes. 2.3, 2.7, 3.2, 3.8, 4 and 4.5. So it actually goes very high. Um, that's exciting. We'll see how that works. And Here's the battery. As you can see, it's a very small battery. Let's see how it goes on and off here. It's gonna be like a twist. Yep. Good, so nice secure battery on there. There we go. All right, so it's on there really well. Uh, it looks like it is a magnet though. Yeah, so it's just a very, very strong connection there with the little magnet. So um, no issues with it coming off. Should be good. Here's the size of the machine. It's not a huge machine. It's actually quite compact, smaller than my hand. The battery is about the same size diameter, more or less than the grip. Um, and RCA connection is just about the same size as the battery, maybe just a touch smaller. Let's see how the grip is weighted. We want to make sure that's at the tip. So that's good because when we're using a machine, we don't want it weighted too far back. Definitely weighted more at the tip. I would say the machine overall is a nice weight. The middle of it has a little bit of punch to it too here that I can feel. 
but not to overpower the grip, as you can see. All right, cool. So let's turn on this battery here. Had to pull the logo and now we're here. Can you guys see that? Let me get a little closer so you guys can see this beautiful battery here. That is a beautiful large display. We have our increments here so I have to have the battery on then I can get to them. That's the 0.1 increments as you can see. You can see them on the right there changing. There's the battery life there at the bottom and a Hertz display and a motor current display. So that's everything in the battery. And again, it just looks really cool. It's a nice, good looking battery. It has a very large window. All right, that wraps up the battery tour. My battery says floaty tattoo. It's super fancy. I'm not gonna brag too much about that, but it's super dope. And thank you so much for putting that on there. Um, I think I prefer that to the colors for this one. And, uh, you know, the viewers know that they have all these awesome colors, plus just stone cold black, which is a very good look as well. So we got this black one that says floaty tattoo. Not going to brag anymore. And we want to try this on some silicone. But first, we want to bag it up. They've sent us some pen machine covers. So let's get going on that. Okay, we're gonna bag this machine together. First, I'm gonna grab the pen type machine cover that they sent me. Okay, here's our machine cover. We have some scotch tape. And we're just going to remove the grip first. Here, so now we have them separated. We have a little excess motor, oil, grease. All right, we have it off, and now we're going to grab this cover. Obviously, this will go over this end. So you put this on the bigger side. All right, and you're gonna just bring that up over the battery. And we're gonna poke this smaller end through. And I'm gonna pull it back a little farther over this next ridge. it comes right to this edge here. All right, now we're gonna flip these up and tape them back. We don't want our excess to be in front of our screen, so make sure you locate where the screen is. Mine's here, and my buttons are here, so I just want this to be tucked away from that. However you see fit. Alright, so that's all good. We're going to replace the grip. Now comes time to give your grip a little more support. I like to use a floaty grip. Follow the link in the description below. F side down. So just kind of turn it and adjust like so until it gets right to your desired position. I like mine pretty much right at the end. And now it's even easier to change my needle depth with that grip on there. 
We can also still see our stroke lengths through here and we can adjust them. We just have to kind of grip it carefully like so and move. All right, so we're all bagged up. We got our floaty grip on. Let's pull out the silicone. Okay, so here's the silicone that they sent me. This is from their website, cptinc.com. It's a nice thick piece. All right. And here's my machine with the floaty grip. I have also another gift from them. I have the Captain Ink cartridges right here. It's a variety pack, so let's take a look, see what we got in here. These are what we're going to use for our review. They're all curved mags or regular mags. So, um, yeah, we need a liner. Captain Ink, thank you so much for sending me these cartridges. I do need a liner for this review. From the cartridges they sent me, I'm going to grab this uh, curved mag, this nine curved mag and a standard gauge. And let's grab the flat one too. The rest are smaller and they're all still mags. So I feel like we don't need to look at those. Um, but I would like to grab some liners and some round shaders. So let me do that right now. In order to properly test out the Captain Ink machine, I'm going to use these Ascent cartridges. I have a three round liner. I'm going to grab a nine round liner and a nine round shader as well. We'll have a more in-depth review of the Ascent cartridges later, but I just want to have something for this machine. So I thought, let's get started. All right, we're going to start with the three round liner. One of my favorites fits in the machine. Great. There it is. And a three round liner. Uh, they have a 3.2 and a 3.8 for stroke length. That those uh, 3.8 might be a touch high. Uh, for three round liner, but let's start at 3.2 and then we can go up from there Kind of depends on the battery and how the motor functions as well. So Let's see Okay, it's on now so we can do those micro adjustments with the 0.1 increments I'm at 7.5 currently for the voltage Okay, I'm going to go up to 8 volts just to see if I can get a little better penetration on those lines. They look really nice and straight though, so I'm happy with the control. Yes, so I definitely got a better, more saturated line as I turned up the voltage, uh, which is reassuring that that's all that is. So uh, let me play around now with going up in stroke length. Okay, I'm up to a 3.8 now. You can hear it. it. It's not a strong motor. I tried to earn points by putting my name upon it. I'm at 8.5 volts. I just want to see if these lines can get any more consistent. All right, some penetration issues maybe with uh, this machine. I feel like I shouldn't have to go up to the 3.8 with the three round liner to get it in. Uh, when I do, sometimes it is going to be a little skippy and uh, it's not exactly what I'm looking for in a liner. Um, let 
And this is just a three round liner thing. Three round liner test is important because it really shows you how the rest of the machine is going to work, I think. I actually did go up a little bit to a 4.2 as my next uh, stroke length option. Yeah, and so now you can see that skipping even more there. Can I bring it up to the camera? So that's like that skipping that I don't like. So you definitely don't want to be too high in stroke. Let's go back down to where we should be closer to the 3.2, in my opinion, for a three round liner. They do have lower strokes available as well, but this is lining. We can go up more in voltage. Let's try a nine, maybe nine volts. And this is back down to the 3.2. I'm just going to bring this over so you guys can see better. There we go. It's never reassuring when you can hear the motor do its job in an inconsistent way. So if the motor is making some junky sounds in the background, that's probably because it's junk. All right, so uh, the line is getting better at nine volts. Yeah, at nine at nine volts, you're, you're just tearing up the skin too much for a three round liner. So here's 9.5. And I'm just doing this to see if my line starts to look more like how I expect it to. And it is, um, it's looking more saturated. I'm going up higher and higher in voltage, which is not great. I'm now at 10 volts. I have a three round liner in. Um, I wanna stay at 3.3 for stroke. It's the appropriate one for my liner. Okay, so now at nine volts, we're a little bit closer to a full solid line. I can still subtly see some little gaps in the line, something you might not see with the camera. Um, so here's what's happening. So with a machine uh, that needs to go higher and higher in voltage to get your line in, let's just start, start with this three round liner because that's what we're on for a, an example. A three round liner is already a very sharp needle. It doesn't need to have a lot of force to get in. It should be able to penetrate um, at lower voltages as long as the motor is strong enough. Um, when we start to see patchy lines, it's because each needle strike is not getting in. So now you need more needle strikes to make a darker line because each needle strike is just making a patchy mark versus a more dense uh, single, uh, let's just say dot. So all these dots together equal the line. And the reason why one looks more saturated than the other is not just voltage, it's definitely stroke length and machine strength. There's a lot of things going on. Um, in this case, the uh, motor is probably not strong enough, which is why I have to go higher, higher in voltage. Um, it could be also the battery. Uh, either way, I think uh, the motor is not gonna run as well in those settings. If I were to cord it, would this machine run better? It's questionable um, whether it would or not, honestly, because even uh, the ones that I've tried with the battery uh, are good. 
they're good on the RCA. So if it's not good on the battery, it's not gonna, it might be a little better on the RCA, but it's still not a great machine. You shouldn't have to cord it to get the uh, results that you're looking for. So the three round lighter test is a great test because uh, it pretty much shows right away whether or not you have a strong motor. This is going to be a patchy line motor. And so I just invented that right now, patchy line motor, whatever that means. I don't know exactly the strength of each motor. Um, they always have stuff listed, but unless you try it, it's hard to really know how that affects the machine. Moving on, we are in those lower stroke lengths for the uh, three round liner. Now we know we're going to have some patchy issues, most likely with the nine round liner. Uh, we will move up in stroke length though to get that in. So maybe it will help a little better in the three round liner case. If you move up in stroke too much, you're going to start blowing people out and having a lot of trouble there and the skipping of the line as well. And so now with a nine round liner, we're going to need a higher stroke. Um, so we'll see how this motor can handle the nine round liner uh, in a higher stroke length. So let's go to 3.8. We can start there. My guess is we'll have to go higher since the motor is not super strong. So usually a little concerning sounds for a motor. Whoa, what just happened? That's weird. Okay, we're at nine volts. Definitely not getting in. I actually felt the silicone fight back. I've never felt that before. I don't know. I think maybe it's just the silicone, like the tip of the needle can get stuck in there for a second. All right. We're going to go up a little bit higher and hold on. Turn it off when you change your strokes. That's dangerous if you don't. So here we go. We're going to change it to a 4.2. We're at nine. We could go up in voltage, but let's see. Okay, so it is a little darker. You can see it getting darker there. You can see where the silicone is fighting back. We're saying, well, use it at a higher voltage, Jenna. 10 volts, let's do that. 4.2, whoa. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty loud. <laughs> and still not much darker. So that's nine volts, 10 volts, no changes at all. All right. So um, going to have to go up and stroke. So that's 4.2. That's not high enough. I'm at 4.5 now. This is their highest stroke length. I'm at nine volts. Okay, I see that it is entering into the silicone slightly more consistent, but I'm still seeing a, a lot of inconsistency in that line. Um, it's just not as dark as I want. It's not as straight as I want. Um, I'm at nine volts. Let's go up to 10. This is probably the last one I'll try here. Yeah, it's getting better. It's definitely a little darker. That's probably our best line there. So that's going to be uh, the best performance here at 4.5 at 10 volts. That's pretty much maxing out the machine for the nine round liner. Um, 
not too excited about how it would run an 11 round liner. So let's try a nine round shader now. Okay, that's what 4.5 stroke sounds like. It's pretty loud. Oh. All right, so the nine round shader, kind of the same problems here. We have uh, kind of inconsistencies uh, in the Z axis. We also have a little bit of uh, issues with uh, straightness of the line, just the needle going all crazy. And I really uh, think that's because of the machine motor, especially because how it sounds, to be honest. I mean, I can just tell from the sound. It doesn't sound like a good running motor. It's kind of louder, a little bit more like a lawn mower. I really like my name on it though. <laughs> Okay, I'm all over the place. I went down in stroke. This, uh, this is 4.2 millimeters. This would be like where I would, you know, the max I would want uh, for running that round shader. Yeah, just very patchy. Not so good. All right, moving on. I think we can skip this, this, and this. Let's go right to this. Uh, let's see how it shades. Let's let's see how it shades. All right, let's go. This is the nine curve mag. For this one, we definitely want to come down and stroke a little bit. Either that 3.8, 3.2. Start with 3.2. We'll do some smoother shading. I definitely don't want to be at a nine. So pretty nice smooth shade there. I do see a little inconsistency in the patterning of the dots just slightly. I can make you guys zoom in on that and see it a little better. But um, each individual dot is just slightly different. Go really smooth and consistent to give it my best shot. Yeah, there's something off about that shading. Um, let's see. You can hear the 3.8 is hitting kind of hard. This wouldn't be like a smooth shade. It's definitely skipping around a little bit. Not as smooth as I would want it. You can see it right in there. Okay, so definitely had the right stroke length. I think for black and gray shading at least. Back down to the 3.2. Now we have their cartridge on as well. Ooh, these carts are bad. Hard to clean these carts out, honestly. They have a fancy little, uh, what is that? A club? This is a a club circle. I, I don't really think it's aerating well. I think a, a lot of uh, stuff is getting trapped at the edge here. It is a little harder to clean. Uh, the tip is easy to see though. It's got the clear tip, so that's nice. Not a bad cartridge. I feel like the cartridge itself is, is pretty consistent. I see a nice smooth soft shade but inconsistent dots just variability in the dot appearance individually all right well let's take off this curved mag they also sent a flat mag
not the best penetration with edging. I tried it at 3.8 and I was up to 8.5. I can go up to nine. I don't like the sound of it. It's definitely too noisy. And yeah, it's still not getting in the way I want. All right, I guess I'll complete this with the, this direction. Can you hear it? <laughs> All right. Sorry. Here we go. So here is the mag on its side. You can really, really see what's going on with the chaos here. This shows it the best. And I can't really sell this machine well to you guys because uh, it just wasn't a successful test on the silicone. I feel like there's a lot of issues with penetration with this machine. Uh, if it had a better motor, would it run better? Sure, maybe, but we wouldn't need all those stroke lengths, I don't think. I don't know what to say. Motors are everything. I, mo if it doesn't have a motor that can function, there's no reason to do stroke lengths or to play around with anything. There's no reason to make a machine. It starts with the motor. The motor's got to be good. Um, stroke links and that system sometimes can weaken the strike as well. So you might need even a stronger motor for your machine uh, if you have the adjustable strokes. That's just generally what I've seen. So keep it in mind, y'all that are making these things, make them strong, make them hit, but make sure you're not replacing the strength with the hit. All right, guys. A little disappointing sometimes here on the floaty channel where i show you a product and then i can't tell you to buy it because it doesn't pass my test but that's what happens captain ink has sent us this machine and it's not penetrating well on the silicone so i wouldn't use it in my studio therefore i can't recommend it to my viewers and i want my viewers to have the best they can for their workflow so don't buy this, but keep watching my channel so you know what to buy and what not to buy. I will always give you honest reviews. Smash that like button and subscribe. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.